Right, hopefully you're all in a very tropical mood now, <laughs> warmed up, ready for our presentation and uh, indeed Queensland is a place for very good exploration. I don't know how many people uh, saw last week there was uh, the Century uh, Zinc Mine has done a restart feasibility study and they think that when that gets back into production <clears throat> that, that operation will be in the top 10 operations, zinc operations globally. So you've got Mount Isa there, you have world-class deposits in Queensland. Uh, our project in Queensland, for those that don't know, uh, is surrounded by five multi-million ounce deposits of gold. And I'm going to show you what we're looking for in Queensland and also, of course, as the name suggests, in Papua New Guinea. <clears throat> as I mentioned, we're looking for gold and copper, large copper deposits. Uh, we're motivated towards investment returns, and this is something that is very dear to our heart. Uh, being an investor and a large shareholder in the company myself, uh, I have <laughs> a lot of motivation to make it all work. So I'm there with uh, our shareholders to make sure that we get this operational. The acquisition of BGM Investments last year in October brought in a number of projects in Queensland and particularly what it brought in is the variation of opportunities. We have Breccia hosted deposits, we have epithermal occurrences, we have porphyry coppers. So what we're actually providing is opportunity for the company to develop one of these types of mineralization. And as I'll go on and show you at a later time, Papua is in a very fortunate position because we have, uh, we have deposits or, or in fact, occurrences that will suit a very small company, which we are at the moment, a, a, a small micro cap. And then we have deposits that are, that are going to be able to help us grow into those larger deposits. And then we have very large deposits in Papua New Guinea and Australia. So it gives us that opportunity for growth in the projects themselves, which is important. We did our first drilling program last year, which was very successful. We had uh, near surface uh, gold in the top 36 metres from surface, and in fact, some of them from 18 metres. And I'll show you that as we go through the presentation. And collectively, of course, we are looking at multi-million ounce opportunities, and we have five deposits within 50 kilometres of our projects. I wanted to show you this slide. Um, this is why we're bullish on gold and, co uh, gold and copper. You can see there, they're the 10-year operate uh, the gold and copper prices over a 10-year period. If you have a look at those trends, they're both positive. If you have a look at the gold, in, oh, sorry, the gold in particular, just in here, this is a two-year trend. From there, along there is the two-year. The dotted line is the last 12-month trend. It appears as though the uh, gold price is accelerating. Uh, it does coincide with the fact that the last 12 months we've had uh, President Trump in office, so whether that's an influence or not is something else. But uh, if you look at the copper price down the bottom there, we also have copper heading in the right direction. This is where we feel we have a lot of confidence in these going forward for the next, uh, at least the next uh, three to five years. A little bit about our board. Um, you can see here, and I'll just point out the critical element here, you can see down the bottom here, Directors and management have 23% of the company. We are heavily invested in the company. Uh, not many shares on issue, we've got 343 million, no debt, and you can see the cash in the bank at the moment there. Uh, we've got our biggest shareholders here, as you can see, and this, by the way, is on our website, and it's also in our last RNS. So please feel free to take your time and to read through this at your leisure. The board of directors, we have a very technical board. We've got four geologists on our board. You can see here we've got Hugh and Kieran over here. Hugh and Kieran built up um, Glencar. Uh, they discovered three projects in Africa which are now in production, very successful in what they do uh, looking for deposits. John Haggis down here, um, Johnny Haggis we call him, He's, uh, he was responsible for the identification of Didipio project in the Philippines which of course is also in production. Um, a very successful track record. Uh, my spot is that I have most of my experience in very large deposit drill outs. We've found it, now we can mine it. It's that gap that I can fill and I've done numerous uh, multinational and multi-commodity feasibility studies. So I bring that experience and also of course some corporate experience. Australia and Papua New Guinea, these are the projects and you can see 
in Australia there. They're all in central Queensland, just down here, and you saw the fly through. We came down the coast to, uh, to the deposits down in here. Lighthouse, it's six amongst giant deposits. Uh, Marengo, and I will show you these in a bit more detail. Uh, the historical gold field. Uh, Copperhead is a very large porphyry copper target. And then in New, uh, New Guinea, we actually have very large porphyry copper prospects, and I'll show you them in more detail. We are very much focused on Lighthouse. So I just draw that to your attention. Although we have these other projects sitting in the background, we're focused at the moment on Lighthouse. It suits the style of deposit, the size of the prospect, suits our company where we are now. We will then grow into these and then ultimately into these big monsters up in uh, Papua New Guinea. So there's a strategy to why we have these deposits and how we're going to advance them. If we look at Lighthouse now, we're at Charters Towers. Uh, 17 million ounces at Charters Towers. We've got Ravenswood over here, Mount Wright, one and a half million ounces, Mount Lation 3.2, Pajingo, and we're sitting bang in the middle of that. Uh, the blue tenements are our prospects, the red dots are gold prospects, uh, and the black dots are operations, as you can see. We're in a very uh, prolific producing area. You can see the big boys have been in this area, SO, CRA, Newcrest, uh, quite large deposits, uh, projects, and they've been fairly successful. In fact, I'll show you um, uh, part of the Newcrest data that was, um, that was done at Plateau. We're 20 kilometres from an operating mine. This is operating here, down the bottom of the screen. That's in operation. There's a CIP plant 17 kilometres away, in fact, so it's within 20 k's. That is opportunity for a small company. It means if we can minimise our capital expenditure by about 30 to 40 million pounds, that's gold to us. That is very valuable and we may not have to build our own plant. Now, of course, we have to enter negotiations with the owners of these plants and that is another question altogether because, of course, we haven't started those negotiations, but there's opportunity to be able to try and minimise our capital expenditure as we go forward. Last year in uh, November, December, we actually drilled at uh, Plateau, and I'll just go back quickly and show you Plateau. Plateau is this red dot here. That's where Plateau is. And we drilled, these are the historical results up in the top right-hand corner. They're good results. And these, don't forget, these were 30 years ago they were drilled. It hasn't been drilled for 30 years. So we came along and we drilled, and we got these results here. 22 at 1.9, 18 at 1, 20 at 5, 0.5, and 10 at 1.9. Now. What I want to draw your attention to is the depths from 39 metres, 16 metres, 18 metres. This is very shallow and it is absolutely fantastic opportunity. Now 22 metres is the downhole depth. The true width is about 11 metres. It's exactly half that. 11 metres is the width of this room. That's the true width of the mineralisation that we encountered, only 39 metres from surface. So that's opportunity. I want to draw your attention to that because it's very important as we build this, this company. What surprised us is the zinc and the silver and the copper that we encountered. These are relatively low grade. I'm not too concerned about the, low, the grades and I hope you aren't too concerned about the grades. What excites us is the fact that we're hitting broad intervals of these types of elements. What that says to us is that this is a very big system and that we're getting the zinc, we're getting the silver, we're getting the copper, we're getting the gold. Now, this is great because what it does is helps us to be able to define where we go with our exploration moving forward. Um, and as you can see down the bottom here, one of our RNSs, we actually likened the geology and the geochemistry to the Mount Wright Gold Mine, which is about 50 kilometres from Plateau. Um, if you look at the geology, we have a lot of trouble distinguishing between the breccia that we have here at Plateau and the breccia that we see at Mount Wright. They're almost identical rock types. You've got multiple types of rock in there. You've got the uh, very fine grain black sulphides in through here. Um, similarly, you're looking at the hydrothermal rhyolite. Uh, this is very, very fine grain sulphide in here. They're identical rock types. So we're getting the same rock types that you get at Mount Wright. We're getting similar geochemistry. This is very exciting for us. This is looking straight down from the sky. This is a rock type. Okay, this brown is just a rock type here. Then you've got our modelled gold coming out here and you can see it's open. There's no drilling out here. 
you can see our model mineralization. This is gold, by the way. The purple and the green is gold. And you can see it's wide open out here. These are very shallow holes. These are about 20 meter holes. So they're not fully testing this. And then out here, we've got uh, open to the west. So the deposit is very much open and we've got opportunity to be able to follow these out. And of course, at depth as well. Um, one of the holes here, this hole that's here, it was drilled all the way through, right down through to here by Newcrest. It's an 857 meter hole. It's a deep hole. Now, they've hit 243 metres at 2.5 grams silver. Now, 2.5 grams silver probably doesn't light too many people's fire, but the 243 metres at 2.5 grams silver, that lights my fire because there's a big system there and um, we've tapped into it. Incidentally, immediately beneath that, at 550 metres down, they hit 2 metres at a gram gold. 2 metres at a gram gold. You yawn and you walk away. But to me, the system is still there. This gold is still there. The fact that you have a little drill hole this big that's intersected gold at 550 metres down hole is very exciting because it just shows the potential at depth and also, of course, a long strike, which we can't forget. Uh, these are the rock samples up in here. The, uh, Red dots are all rock samples. We've got a whole pile of high grade rock samples out here. We don't even know what's there. There's no drilling. So this is opportunity for us out here to expand this operation and to be able to try and find uh, enough for our, our maiden resource. We are aiming for a maiden resource and uh, we'll work hard to achieve that. I wanted to show you further up into the tenement, uh, the lighthouse tenement. We have additional prospects. We've got here the double event prospect. From this side of the image to here is three kilometres. There's three kilometres of high grade rocks. I'm not sure if you can read them from where you are, but they're up to two ounces of gold in the rock samples along a three kilometre trend. They've drilled the black dots. They have drilled previously, historically. They hit reasonable grades. The width varies. The width will always vary in gold deposits. It varies between one metre and four metres. The grade always varies, but the grades are reasonable and all of this drilling is in the top 20 metres. That's exciting, okay? So there's, there's opportunity to be able to drill this out and get a near surface high grade resource and we will be doing that. Uh, we have another one in addition to Double Event called Lower Lighthouse, also within the Lighthouse Tenement. These are some of the drill holes from Lower Lighthouse. It was drilled by Mount Lation in 1992. They're reasonable grades, two metres at uh, 7.3, two at 6.8, one metre at 2.2. Pretty good grades, all within the top 20 metres. So it was only shallow drilling they did. Did that work? There we are, Marengo. Let's move on quickly, because now I just want to introduce you to some of the other prospects that we have um, sitting in the wings that we will develop quietly on the side so that we advance them. They're not as advanced as, uh, as, as, as Lighthouse. So I just want to make you aware of them and so that they're on your radar. This is the geology. What excites me about the geology is the, the number of colors in that image. Each color is a different rock type and each of those rock types has been brought up from the depths. And what you need for mineralization of gold and copper and silver, you need multiple events of mineralizing. You need the heat to come through, you need the gold and the, and, the, and the silver and copper to be remelted, recrystallized, redeposited, and then again, off we go. We heat it again and we concentrate it. So this is very important and it speaks volumes if you've got so many rock types like this. And uh, we're excited by this. This, um, this has got a lot of very historical uh, mines there. There are 37 old gold mines in a gold field. We have the whole gold field under our tenement. And there are some grades up to 150 grams per tonne gold uh, in, the, in, the, in the rock samples here. So we have these big structures running east-west. We've got these big structures coming up here. Everything's crumpling. All the signs geologically are very, very good. So this is a, very exciting for us. This is some of the rock you see on the surface. This is copper carbonate and it's at surface. You can crack the rocks and you get visible copper. Um, you can crack some of the rocks and get visible gold. So this is very exciting for us. It's very early stage. So I just draw your attention to it. We are starting work on this and you will hear ab about our progress at Marengo. 
We're only 55 kilometres from Mount Carlton, which is an operating gold mine. So again, we have opportunity that we can talk to our neighbours and perhaps do some toll treatment. Uh, you can see a costine here, uh, 12 metres at uh, 6 grams. That's a pretty reasonable uh, intersection historically. And of course, one mile mountain there, which is up in here, the blue, this one up in here, is what we're going to be focusing on. So you'll, you'll read about this as we go through. Copperhead is in Australia, it's also in Queensland. Uh, it's a big porphyry mm. copper. Look at the size of this thing. This is one kilometre. So this is about three kilometres by two kilometres of um, reasonable grade. We're looking at 450 parts per million copper over in here, which has been drilled. There are five drill holes. You can see the black dots. There's another 450 ppm copper signature and another one over here. So we've got opportunity to find very large tonnage, relatively low grade. You can see the five holes the weighted average was 0.25% copper and 2.1 grams per tonne silver. But the mineralisation has been logged in the holes from the top to the bottom, over 300 metres. So this is a very big system. It is mineralised. And you, again, you will hear about us talking about Copperhead as we advance this slowly. This is actually quite a big project. So this is sitting there in amongst the big porphyry coppers that we can look at down the track. And finally, Papua New Guinea. Now, this is, is quite spectacular. Now, I've only been involved with the company for about four months now myself, and I'm excited by what I see here. Look at these deposits in here. Manus Island, it's been in the, in the news for all of the wrong reasons. There's gold there. You've got Lahir there at 56 million ounces of gold. Bougainville, of course. Uh, you know, the, the history of Bougainville, everybody's well aware of this. Uh, Woodlark, Misima, Wafi Golpul. We're bang in the middle. Here we are, right here in the same geology and with the same sort of potential. So what we're keen to look at is, do we have one of these multi-million ounce deposits? These are huge. Some of these are a billion tonnes. Low grade, but they're, they're very, very large deposits. So we're right in the right geology there, in amongst the monsters, and look what we're getting. This is quite spectacular. This is massive sulphide through here. They started preparing the drilling pad here and the excavator was ripping into massive sulphide at surface. There's 35 grams gold and 4% copper at the surface. The core is very, very strongly altered. You don't see core like this and rocks like this very often. This is quite unique. So I'm, I'm excited by this core. There's about 300, over 300 metres of this altered rock. And I don't think you understand them, but perhaps you don't understand the, the, the energy that's required to alter 300 metres of rock. So this is a big system. It's a big porphyry system, and they've hooked into it in previous drilling. And uh, we're quite excited by what the potential might be here. It's not our focus for the moment because it's a very big deposit. It's going to take a lot of money. It's going to take a lot of uh, resources to be able to explore that. And we're fully conscious of that. We're not going to be going and throwing lots and lots and lots of money at these massive deposits. right? We will develop them sensibly. We will do what we can with the budget that we have. And we will grow the company based on the near-term opportunities that we have at Surface and the longer-term prospects here for big-scale deposits. This is what you can expect in the news flow over the next 12 month period. We're going, oh, sorry about that. We're going to have geophysics at Plateau. Now you can see I've put geophysics at one mile, geophysics at Julie Von at, uh, at Copperhead. Now the reason for that is that you can always go and drill lots of holes, but we want to be smarter than that. And what we need is the geophysics will help us to target the sulphide rich zones. Sulphide rich zones conduct electricity very, very well and they have very high, strong conductive responses. That's what I'm looking for. So we do these things, it'll highlight the prospects and say, that's where you should be drilling. So that's what we're gonna do at each of these prospects and really get, to, get these, um, these targets well defined before we start drilling lots and lots of money into, into drilling, okay? So we are gonna do some RC drilling here. Um, and, and as I mentioned, the uh, uh, double event up in Lighthouse, the near surface, 20 metre uh, deep, over three kilometres, I want to drill that out. So that's something that we will be doing. So there'll be some good news flow coming from that, uh, that drilling. Regional assessment, rock sampling and XRF. And as you can see down here, Papua New Guinea, we want to do a review and see if we can target that, that uh, uh, conductive source at depth. And that will help us to, um, to really hit the sweet spot of those big deposits. And that's it.